And there's an additional issue with pornography, which is not often discussed, which is that remember guys in particular, the brain is a learning prediction machine. And if I'm not trying to say that all pornography is bad, but there are, well, I think we could actually pretty objectively say all pornography is bad, especially, I think I know where he's going with this porn is, yeah, there's so many layers to that. Like he's trying to be amoral about it, but I think pornography is bad. But anyway, let's see where he's going. Good data to support the idea that if your brain learns to be aroused by watching other people have sex, it is not necessarily going to carry over to the ability to get aroused when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody else, right? The, especially young kids who are consuming a lot of pornography, the brain is learning sexual arousal to other people having sex. So you're going to program yourself into being a voyeur. So this is actually, this is such a good point. I, and I appreciate this about Huberman because if you start watching pornography when you're an adult, because you've already developed sexually, pornography will still have this effect where, yeah, you kind of need more and more. Um, you get used to watching other people get aroused. And then it doesn't translate the same way when you're having your own sexual experiences because porn is hyper-produced and a, a real person is not. But when you're young and you're watching, you're still developing. So it's actually a really good point, which is that if that threshold gets set at a really young age, it's much harder to overcome when you become an adult, which is why, you know, getting exposed to pornography at a young age is so devastating. Or, yeah, or just create challenges in, in sexual interactions with, uh, you know, with, with peer, uh, with a, with a real partner. Right? Mary Harrington has the three laws of porno dynamics and the second law of porno dynamics is the law of fap entropy. And it says that whatever you start out wanking to will get progressively more intense over time. And I think that this is sort of speaking yeah, to that true. ever, ever sort of escalating amount of um, the wildness that you need to watch in order to get an ever decreasing stimulus that comes back. Yeah, you know, um, Jordan Peterson actually said, uh, he actually might've been talking to one of these guys when he said it, but novelty enhances pleasure. And that's kind of what he's talking about. He calls it fap entry, which is hilarious. But it's, uh, it's, it's actually the same thing. It's like you, you get used to watching stuff and then your body doesn't respond. So then naturally your brain just does this. You don't even really think about it, but naturally your brain just starts to click into you know, other stuff, more extreme content, new content, just stuff that's different. That difference is kind of exciting. But you know, with, with the clients that we work with, a lot of them come to us because they started watching stuff or you know, even worse is when they start doing stuff, it's no longer on a screen, but now it's in-person experiences that were just way past the line they thought they would ever cross. Um, so FAP entropy, that's a funny way of putting it, but it's, it's real. And you know, here I'm, I'm approaching this only through the lens of biology, right? I'm not a, you know, I'm not a psychologist and I'm certainly not um, political in it in any way. At least not, I have ideas about politics, but I just don't discuss them publicly. But the, but the idea here is that, you know, I'm not saying pornography as a stimulus is bad or good. What I'm saying is it, in its availability and its extreme forms, it's a very potent stimulus and very potent stimuli of any kind, extremely palatable food, extreme pornography, um, extreme experiences like bungee cord jumping, those set a threshold for dopamine release. He used my word, threshold. That's exact, it's exactly what's going on here. When you watch pornography, you're, it's setting a threshold. And the reason this is important is because of what Chris said, which is that if you watch enough of it, eventually you start to escalate that threshold because the stuff you were always watching, not interesting anymore. It's not giving you the release that you want. And so you look for new content, you look for more extreme content, all that kind of stuff. But he's right. It's, it's escalating everything, even in your body. The higher the dopamine peak, the bigger the drop afterwards. And it's not that you drop to baseline, you drop below baseline. So again, it's not, these things aren't good or bad. They just have to be controlled in a way. Well, okay. So I, I just want to, he's glossing over a very important point. So he referenced Anna. That's Anna Lemke, who wrote Dopamine Nation. She's a, one of the world's leading neuroscientists in this field. And what he's talking about there is that when you, um, there's kind of four stages of dopamine. So you have the drip, which um, in a porn viewership context is, I'm thinking about watching, but I'm not watching. So you're scrolling on social media, you're maybe starting to imagine things, you know, there's that drip, which is sort of the anticipation of the release. 
And then there's kind of the spike, which is where you're starting to watch or you're very close and your dopamine is, is now really starting to get secreted. And the peak of it is, you know, what, whenever that episode finishes, whatever that looks like, you close the laptop, you masturbate, it, it obviously looks different depending on the situation. Everybody talks about that as like, oh, I got my dopamine hit, I got my dopamine release or whatever. But what he just talked about is what happens afterwards. So you have the drip, you have the, there's actually a D word that they use, uh, I forget, but there's the escalation, there's the climax of it, and then there's the dip. And the reason the dip is significant is because you cannot live with a dopamine deficit. It, it just doesn't work. We are programmed to somehow always get back to baseline. So that's why when you eat really sugary food, especially if you don't eat, let's say you don't do it very often, but you have really sugary food, at first you're like, oh, this is so sugary. This is like way, it's, it's too much sugar. But that's just because you're, you're in the escalating part of it. And then at the, when it's the most sugary is the peak. And then you stop eating for a bit because you're like, this is so sugary. I'm done with this. And then you have a dip. And so five minutes later, you're like, what's wrong with me? I want, I want to eat that thing again that I just told myself I didn't want to eat. I used to do this all the time. You know, I watch pornography. And in that, in that kind of um, climax, just, just as it was sort of descending, I would feel so guilty. I feel like, oh, it's so terrible. I'm never going to do this again. But then when you get into the dip, it's such an uncomfortable feeling that all the cravings fire back again. And that's what creates this sort of cyclical behavior that makes one little slip turn into a binge, which turns into days, which turns into weeks, and et cetera, et cetera. And the, the dip is the part that people often don't talk about. So I, it sounds like he's moving on, and I just want to comment on that. Because if you've ever experienced that, <clears throat> that's what's going on. It's not, it's not the big dopamine peak you need to be aware of. It's actually the dip. That's the part you have to guard against. Because if you don't guard against that dip, you're going to just make a bad thing way, way worse. When people are pursuing dopamine peaks over and over and over, and they aren't getting them, typically it's because they've been pursuing that activity far too often. And you're saying perhaps take a break from that? And then maybe uh, an ability for yourself, your system to reset. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in theory, all the things that we're talking about with pornography could be superimposed onto food or could be superimposed onto real sex, right? Um, that one also has to be cautious there, right? But the cycling back and forth between dopamine and low dopamine states, dopamine fasting as it were, but maybe just low dopamine states, these are natural rhythms that existed in the nervous system. We have to remember what the dopaminergic system is there for. Okay, so the one thing that's interesting about that is that's a little bit incomplete. So if you stop watching pornography, your brain and your body do, they reset or they kind of, they set a new standard, a new baseline. But um, it's not it's not the same as some of these other things they're kind of referencing, referencing because... If you start to watch pornography again, you just end up in the same place. Like with food, if you have, you know, if you eat a lot of toxic food or junk food, you can stop eating that. Your body will actually purge. It'll detoxify. And then you could start to eat junk food occasionally and build a healthy relationship with it. Pornography is not like that. Pornography is like you stop and then you, you don't go back to it because it, even just a little bit, it's going to set course or it's going to, it's going to throw off your dopamine level so significantly. It's, it's like playing with fire. It's not really worth it. So it, what they said is true, but there, there is another component to that, which is you don't just get off of pornography. You stay off. Pornography could be superimposed onto food or could be superimposed onto real sex, right? Um, that one also has to be cautious there, right? But the cycling back and forth between dopamine and low dopamine states dopamine fasting as it were, but maybe just low dopamine states. These are natural rhythms that existed in the nervous system. We have to remember what the dopaminergic system is there for. I'll say it again. I wasn't consulted at the design phase, but we know as a, as a, just really, I love that he just said that. Um, especially cause we know Andrew Huberman does believe in God, but, um, that is, it is an important thing. And it's, it's kind of lost now in our society because we're so dopamine driven with our phones is low dopamine is not actually bad. So earlier we were talking about the drip, that, or sorry, the drop rather. The drop is actually just a very, it's a very small window of time, which is why if you know what's going on and you can survive that window of time, you'll be fine. 
But there are such a thing as low dopamine states, and we become very uncomfortable with that, with that just in general, um, which is actually why a lot of people watch pornography, right? Because we get used to the, the stimulation, we get used to the dopamine hits from notifications and scrolling on social media and messages and all this kind of stuff. And then when you do have these low states, people say, oh, I'm bored. That's why I watch pornography. You're not bored. You're just, you're so hyper stimulated that when you did go into a low dopamine state, it felt so uncomfortable. You needed something to get you back uh, to that state again, and you chose pornography. That's that's usually what's going on here. So this is um, again not I'm 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 impressed. Like he doesn't always discuss this kind of stuff, but it's it's very much dictating our behavior today. As a generic form of motivation and pursuit, you can imagine the human or the animal that's hungry or thirsty. It needs energy to go pursue the thing. So the idea that you have to eat in order to get energy, that's true. But you need energy in order to get the thing to eat. So our nervous system has energy also. That's dopamine and epinephrine. Yes, we use glucose and glycogen, et cetera, when we're pursuing things. But the idea here is you're pursuing something and then either by smell or by sight, you think you're on the right track. So you go down that track and then, ah, there it is. You know, you get some berries or you get, you know, let's get prehistoric about this or you get to kill the prey and eat it. And then it gives you energy to continue this pursuit or to reproduce. I mean, there's a reason why humans and other animals seek out reproduction is that every, every species, but certainly humans have two innate desires built into them, whether or not they decide to actualize this or not, is the desire to protect young and make more of its own species. Okay. So, um, again, what he's, what he's saying here is the, the dopamine circuits in your brain and body are designed to acquire reward. Because reward actually gives you energy or some, there's, there's some sort of incentive biologically. But to do that actually requires energy expenditure. So if we translate this into the actual subject of this video, right, which is pornography consumption, to view pornography and to chase that, that climax actually requires an expenditure of energy. And then when you have the climax, it's so invigorating, it kind of gives you this burst of energy and that makes you want to do it more. So he, he's giving kind of a different angle on, on the same concept here. Um, he's using more uh, like biochemical language, talking about like energy consumption uh, versus en energy acquisition. But it's the same idea here. And this is, again, because this is so biological, like wired into our bodies, it's another anchoring argument for why pornography is actually hyper addictive whether or not they decide to actualize this or not is the desire to protect young and make more of its own species every successful species does that even if people don't have children in general people care about children because they of what they represent very few people dislike children i mean there are a few mutants out there that dislike children but you always worry about those kinds of people so you know this is actually again i, I love that dr huberman's talking about children and the young because that's how he sort of opened this clip, was talking about biological development, getting exposed to pornography at a young age, and how that can really affect your wiring sexually. What's interesting here is there, there are some studies that suggest that pornography is linked with body dysmorphia, uh, erectile dysfunction, and even infertility. Now, it's a very small body of research, so I'm, I'm not putting my, my um, stake in the ground over it, but... It's interesting to think that the the pornography consumption kind of is like it's tapping into your sexual wiring, which is supposed to be all about what he just said, right? Reproduction, kind of proliferating a species. And the irony is that pornography actually can work against that. If it makes you infertile, if it decreases your sexual performance, it actually works against those very goals and it makes it harder for you to do thing, the two things that he just said we're wired to do, which is... Uh, have young in the first place, right? Proliferate the species, and then secondly, protect them. So um, uh, again, it's not quite the point he was making, um, but he brought it up, and I, I just can't ignore it. Which is that if you're watching pornography and you care about the youth, you care about children, or you know you want to repopulate the earth one day and you know spread your name and build a family and be a father, you really need to think about how pornography consumption is going to work against that. And the additional layer to that, which is definitely not part of this video, but I, again, I think it's worth noting while we're on this subject, is that, that if you struggle with pornography, your kids are more likely to struggle with it as well. And um, if you've been through any kind of pornography addiction, you'll know how debilitating this is. And I'm sure this would be the last thing you would want for anyone on the planet. 
let alone your own children. And so again, all, all the more reason to stop. Yeah, so this video is actually, this is a great example uh, from a biological perspective of how bad porn is for you. And we know that spiritually, relationally, psychologically, I mean, porn has so many adverse effects. So if you are struggling, make sure you're getting the help that you need. I'm very active on Instagram. You can hit me up over there. My DMs are always open. We'll love to speak with you. Or if you're really in a, in a bind and you need help right now, I did put a link in the description here. You can just book a call. Uh, we'd love to speak with you and, and see if we can help. And I know that Andrew Huberman is very heady. He's very wordy. Um, and sometimes like even the stuff he talks about goes over my head. So if there was anything you didn't understand or maybe something that you have more questions about, make sure you write them in the comments below. I will reply to every single one of them myself. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe. And if you really did enjoy this content, I know you're gonna enjoy this video. Make sure you check it out. I'll see you in the next one.